All right. Uh, is that a good volume for everybody? All right, cool. Um, all right, so my name is James Montalvo. Um, I'm going to be doing this presentation sort of 50-50 with Darren, so he's going to come up in the second half here. Also, Stephanie Johnson's mentioned here because uh, a previous version of this presentation she uh, participated. And also, I've got several other people from our group, uh, Scott, uh, Ray, Costa, Avridis, and uh, Brian Alpert's here somewhere else. Um, all people that kind of started our wiki um, about four years ago. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of our EVA wiki today. Um, Scott is going to give a presentation later on in the day if you want to get into how we use it for meeting minutes or managing mission information, that kind of thing. Um, instead, what I'm going to talk about today is, as you can see on the screen, uh, wiki accountability. Um, the biggest issue that we face in general with getting people to accept using a wiki is this kind of notion that um, that you know, it's w like Wikipedia, and you know, Wikipedia, as uh, Rohit said, you know, has errors in it, and maybe it has one more error than, than an Encyclopedia Br uh, Britannica. Um, but you know, Wikipedia is kind of a totally different beast, and for one thing, you know, it is pretty accurate, and it's got a lot of information, and I encourage you to go edit it and uh, try to get rid of that one error. But um, it also is in constant attack from vandalism, which we don't have. Um, so, you know, what we really wanted to do over the last year is be able to say to people, you know, we have this level of accountability and it's a higher level of accountability than what we had when we were using share drives or SharePoint or um, Confluence or whatever other tools and, and um, the way we were using them um, is not as accountable as what we have now. So um, what I'm going to do to start here is just kind of give you an idea of Wikipedia scale and then show you um, our scale as well, which is maybe a little bit smaller. Um, so on, on Wikipedia, you've got a lot, of, a lot of different articles. So you know, on, on things like operating systems, highly technical things, you've got pages um, like Windows and, and OS X that have hundreds of watchers and thousands of edits and thousands of editors. And um, you know, Google and Facebook pages on Wikipedia, you've got, again, thousands of watchers, editors, and, and edits. And you know, I think the, the most edited page ever on Wikipedia is the George W. Bush page with like 60,000 edits or something like that. Um, um, but on the other end of the scale on Wikipedia, you've got pages like Lima Bean. Um, um, and if you're not familiar with, with MediaWiki, the, the software behind it, that syntax, the brackets, is how you link to pages. So um, that's why that's there. Um, people don't like Lima Beans, evidently. Um, uh, Wikipedia doesn't tell you if it has less than 30 watchers how many there are. So this might be 29 watchers. It might be one. Um, um, and it might be 29 people that hate Lima Beans. Uh, um, other pages like Augustan Literature or the Geography of Botswana, sort of similar situations. Um, geography of Botswana has got 156 edits and 54 editors, and it's 14 years old. So you can think about the fact that you know maybe 13 years ago all those people made those edits and were watching then, and they're probably not watching now. Um, so that's kind of a good page if, and hopefully nobody that edits Wikipedia is listening to this part. But you know, if if you want to find a page to vandalize, that might be a good one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, and it just got protected on Wikipedia and you can't edit it anymore. Uh, so our wiki scale, um, I said I, I think the George W. Bush page has about 60,000 edits. Ours, our entire wiki has about that. Um, uh, we've got 47 active contributors. Um, I didn't say what our group does specifically. Sorry, I meant to. Um, we do flight control and instructing for extravehicular activity. That's um, spacewalks, basically. Um, so you know we've got a ballpark 40 some odd people in our group, and then we've got a few people outside of our group um, that edit our wiki very regularly. So the, we call those active contributors. We've got other people that, that edit less frequently; um, they're not as active. Um, so we got that many ed uh, contributors and edits. Um, we get a lot of extra viewers too per day, so about 100 viewers per day. And in 2015 so far, we've got about um, 600 viewers total. Um, so our wiki is a little bit different scale than Wikipedia. It's kind of um, on that lower end scale with the lima bean and such, um, if you think at a, at a specific page level. So we started to kind of wonder, you know, yeah, the, the Barack Obama page or the George W. Bush page, those are getting a lot of scrutiny. If I go and make an edit on there, there's going to be thousands of people that are going to go see it, and they're going to 
change it if it's wrong or disagree with it probably because it's contentious. But, um, but there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on it. So we can, to some degree, trust that more. Um, whereas you know, on the, on the Lima bead page or on our um, spacesuit page, um, you know, we're not going to have 1,000 viewers. So if I go make an edit right now, I won't necessarily um, get a lot of people looking at it right away. So we wanted to look at how can we quantify our, quanti our accountability and um, be able to say that you know, this page over here we trust a lot, whereas this page over here, um, we're not getting the right people or enough people to look at it and, and um, vet the information. So it was about a year ago that we really started to ask these questions. Um, and so what we, what we did to kind of figure out where to start is we wanted to graph watcher. And watching is like following, if you're more familiar with Facebook or Jive or something like that. Um, so you're, you're following a page, you're watching the page. So when it changes, you see that it changes. You get to see what changed. Um, so we wanted to visualize watcher and page relationships. So um, see all the pages that I'm watching and all the pages that Darren's watching and, and which ones um, you know, we're both watching, that kind of thing. Um, so we did that. And um, we came up with this network graph. And I'm going to explain it once I bring it up. Um, basically, what we have on the outside, and the color's a little bit off here. So we've got a bunch of or orange dots around the outside of the screen, or outside of the, the picture there uh, in the oval shape. And those are people. And you've got different size dots for people that are connected to, to more of the blue dots. So again, orange dots are people. Blue dots are pages. Um, if a person is connected to a page by any color line, um, it means they're watching that page. So just with that piece of information, you can kind of see that you know, on the far left here, we've got that kind of cloud of pages that only that one person is watching. And you've got other big clouds all around the, the outside there. Um, in the first version, we didn't have any colors to the lines. Um, and we just had, we just had gray lines everywhere. Um, but then we started to wonder, well, what if we graph it with all of the people that are watching a page, but they haven't seen the latest revision, we color that line red. So all the red lines mean that all those people haven't seen the latest version of that page. Um, so that's a lot of red. Um, so immediately we realized we had two major issues. One, we had to get people watching pages or, or reviewing pages um, Here's my short-term goals. Um, we got to encourage people to do their reviews. So um, when they get a page that changes, they need to get in there and need to, they need to do those reviews. Um, the other thing we need to do is we need to eliminate those singly watched pages, those ones that are just clustered around one person. Um, we need to get rid of those. We need to pull those into the middle where they're being watched by lots of people. <clears throat> so what we did is we created uh, an extension, which is like a plugin or uh, whatever you want to call it. We built on top of MediaWiki um, and created this method to um, basically track how many people are watching every, any given page and also how many people have reviewed the latest version of that page. So you can see um, in this table, it just kind of gives you an idea of that. It also tells you um, like how long it's been since those people ha have reviewed that page. Um, so this was kind of a good first step. It let us uh, be able to see what um, you know, what pages were problems, um, and so we could kind of address those, those issues just in a, in a basic table, and that's nothing real, real special there. Um, but the other issue is, and Darren's going to talk a lot more about, about culture in the second half of this, but um, the other issue is it's sometimes difficult to get people to use a new piece of software because it's not necessarily intuitive to them. And Wikipedia is very much designed for, um, or it has been designed in the past for, for a very kind of tech-centric um, group of people that liked the way their watch list system worked. Um, and they're kind of trying to improve that now. Um, but basically, you have this watch list on the top of, of Wikipedia. And, and our, our wiki looks very similar to this. Um, you click on watch list, and you're given this, which if you're familiar with Wikipedia, maybe this looks OK to you. But if you're not, you're probably like, OK, well, what do I do with that? Um, well, first thing you do is you scroll down. And then you're given the pages on your watch list. and um, it's not clear at all what you're supposed to do um, as far as reviewing those pages. So what we did basically is created a really simple um, version. I hope this is simple. I hope you look at this and you say, OK, I have three pending reviews. 
One of them's red, so I should probably look at that one first. And there's a big green button that says display the change. So basically, you click the big green button, and it allows you to see what changed. Um, so <clears throat> we implemented this system. And again, this was what, what it initially looked like. And over the course of about six months, we changed it from looking like this to looking like this. So they're still red. Um, and it's important to understand that this is our, our entire wiki. And you know, some of these people may not be in our group anymore. They may never have been in our group, and they're just interested in watching pages, and we're not necessarily forced to make them review pages. Right? They may have just been an interested person from within the community. Um, the important thing is that we've changed from this that was about, like I think, 15% of pages that were not consistently not reviewed to this, which is um, all pages are, are reviewed by at least somebody at this point, and let's, I think we're down to below 4% of total um, reviews that are, that are pending at any given time. And again, it's, it's, it's driven up higher by a lot of individuals that may not be in our group anymore. <clears throat> so um, I, actually, I'm going to go back here for one second. So you've seen, you can clearly see that the red is reduced here, um, which is good. Uh, the other thing that is reduced is those big clusters around the outside. Um, so that's our second issue of, you know, one, we wanted to get people to do their reviews. The other, other issue we want to do is make sure that people are um, watching more pages. So those pages that are watched by just one person um, get those on, into other people's, in other people's lists. And you can see that's, that, that there's a big improvement there. And the way we did that, and this is what, what our total um, kind of watch state was in uh, December of last year, um, we had 57% of pages were watched by just one person, which was not good. Um, basically, what we did is we, we wanted to have a way to suggest to people, you know, this is something you might be interested in, and also the wiki in general needs your help watching these pages. So we added something to that pending reviews page that I showed you a few minutes ago. So if this is the top of the page, we scroll down a little bit. Um, and we've got this section here that says, this wiki needs your help watching pages. Um, and basically, these pages are, are pages that are similar to things that are in your watch list already. So you might be interested in them. And also, they probably have like one watcher or two watchers or something like that. Um, so the wiki needs you to watch them. And so we implemented this. And um, shortly after that, we heard this conversation and uh, made up some um, fake names here in case anybody's in the room that actually was in this conversation. But, um, Basically, we had uh, two, two people, that, uh, two of our um, colleagues, uh, Amy and Bob, that were heckling each other about who was watching more pages. And Amy says, I'm watching almost as many pages as our boss. I'm going to get more than her. And Bob says, it just seems to randomly suggest pages to me, though. Why would I care about rule number one, two, three, four, five? We've got a lot of rules, things we have to follow as far as um, what we can do on the space station. And Amy says, well, that rule is about your hardware. Uh, the rule, the title of the page was just like rule one, two, three, four, five, basically. Uh, that rule is about your hardware. And Bob says, oh, well, maybe I do want to watch that. And the point of this conversation is, one, it was interesting that they got a little competition to, to try to, um, you know, watch more pages. But also, you know, a lot of times when we name things, are kind of obscure. We don't necessarily, you can't tell from the title that it's something that's relevant to you. But if you... Um, have some algorithm to go and say, well, this content is similar to this content, and you suggest it to the person, um, you know, it can actually go, the computer can actually go and, and do the work for you and, and find those things that, are, that may be relevant to you. So the important thing is, has this watch suggestions feature helped? And so this is a graph over time of our, um, of our page watches. You can see back prior to uh, prior to December, we were up in the 60% sort of range, and then we added watch suggestions, and you can see just that once watched pages line um, dropped to below 10%, and the corresponding two watch pages going up. Um, I haven't pulled this graph since then. I'm hoping that we've got the, um, the once watched pages even lower, and we start to see more of those three to five watchers um, go up as well. So. When we got thinking about this, before we made that, that visualization I showed you initially, we really wanted to think 
you know, we made that visualization basically and we kind of had a panic of, all right, we need to solve these two problems. But before we, before we got to that point, um, we wanted to really look at it and be able to say, well, you know, this page here has a score of 10 and this page has a score of 9.5 and be able to really say, you know, this is a super high quality, really good page, whereas this one is maybe a little bit more lacking and, or this page has good visibility from our group, but we need to have quality look at it or um, engineering look at it or whatever. Um, so a much more quantified way of saying what we need in each place. So in, um, since seeing as we've, we've kind of solved those two initial issues of, of not enough um, people reviewing pages and also um, too many singly watched pages, we're coming now back to, you know, how can we determine I mean, we've determined the number of re reviewers for each page, but how can we determine a way to kind of rate the contributors and determine um, how much they provide in, in specific ways to different, um, to different aspects of pages and combine those things to address weak points in the pages. So this is where we're still kind of in development. Um, we're, we're adding things um, little by little, um, but basically we want to be able to rate reviewers for accuracy, thoroughness, impartiality, um, and then variance across topics. So you know, I'm, I'm on our EVA wiki and I know a lot about certain tools, but I don't know a lot about the suit necessarily. And so it's important for me to be able to be rated as being a strong, uh, having strong knowledge in one area, but not in another. Um, and that's not something we do at this point. Um, and basically you're trying to say for any time a person reviews a page and you know, puts their stamp of approval on it, what's their probability of, of correctness? Um, not just when they review, but also when they edit. Um, so we want to be able to basically determine a correctness score. Um, the other thing aspect to that is, you know, if, if I'm giving accurate information or providing a good review, um, it is only so useful if I do it three weeks after the person, you know, after it's needed. Um, so it's important to have people that are engaged. So people that are editing frequently um, and, you know, seeing the time between when a change happens and when they go and review it. Um, and using the, the page history and, um, and difference between pages. So, so they're not just going and saying, yeah, okay, that person made an edit, but they're actually going and looking at the difference between one, one version and another and how much time they're spending on those revisions. Um, so basically we're looking at, at just, not just their correctness, but also how engaged they are. And so we're working on, on that currently and we've got kind of built into our, our watch analytics thing, um, the engagement score thing here. Um, and it's still kind of crude, we're still working on it, um, but it, it's a start. And on, page, um, on the pages aspect, we also have page watch quality. And what, we're, what we've been doing with that is adding it to the top of each page. So this is our International Space Station page on our wiki. Um, we've got, um, We've got a watch quality and a review status. It's basically saying, you know, I just made an edit. Nobody's reviewed it yet, so it's zero. Um, and on this particular one, actually, I think this is a fake wiki. Um, it's just a screenshot I did, because um, our International Space Station page would actually have a lot higher watch quality than that. But um, basically saying, you know, this is how much we can, we can trust this information and how quickly we, we think that things will um, get reviewed. So. We've done a lot of things with, um, with technology to try to capture people's attention and get people involved with, with various aspects of our wiki. Um, there are, there's been a lot of cultural hurdles that we've had to, we'd ha we've had to go over to get there. And um, we, still have, we still have some. We've got maybe about 80% engagement on our particular wiki. Um, and we wanna get that last 100% because there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of really good information that we want to, to uh, tap. And so Darren's going to talk about kind of those cultural aspects and, and what we're doing to um, try to encourage that last 20% and, and also grow beyond that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so James went into a lot of the technical aspects of, of how we're approaching our problems within our organization. Um, and so I'd like to talk about, you know, the people side of it, the cultural side. Um, we've, we've heard some recurring themes from previous uh, presentations about, 
you know, the, the tools that you use need to be usable by everybody and you need people to actually use them to connect and, and share their information. If they're not using those tools, well then what's the point of having the tools? You want all of your users using those tools. So as James talked about a little bit with the, the page score, we've been thinking about, you know, is there a way we can use our software to change people's behavior and get them to, to use the software more and do what we'd like them to do with the software, share their knowledge. <coughs> So I'd like to talk a little bit first about you know our situation. You know these uh, are most of our organizations here are kind of closed entities. That's kind of the point of this um, enterprise um, community. We all have closed off, or we, most of us have closed off firewalled wikis. Um, and then there's kind of the voluntary open wikis like Wikipedia, right? And so you might think at first, man, these are going to be vastly different, um, but maybe not. Uh, the goal of Wikipedia is to capture the sum of all human knowledge. Is it really that different in our corporate entities? Not really. We have a different subset of knowledge that we want to capture, but it, it's the same thing. We want to capture as much knowledge as we can that's useful to our organization's goals and then make it available to everybody. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, so what does it mean to have your, your employees, your peers use a wiki? You know, if they uh, go view a couple pages every week, if they contribute, you know, a few paragraphs every week, is that really sufficient? You know, you need to have clear goals for your organization to define, well, what is it you really want out of all of your, all of your uh, personnel? so that you actually are achieving goals of having all of your knowledge available. Um, something else to consider, and I'll talk about this more on, a little bit later, is how are you going to motivate people to contribute? You know, you could pay them a dollar a day, uh, but over time that's probably going to fade away. After a while someone might say, you know what, it's not worth that dollar. I'm just not going to do it anymore. Um, so the, the first uh, couple of years that we were uh, using our wiki, we were very motivated on adding information. Um, but eventually, as James pointed out, we realized that we were not um, holding our information accountable enough and making it trustworthy enough. And so our focus now has kind of changed. Uh, we've realized that if everybody is not participating, if you don't have continuous contributions from everyone in your organization, then a wiki can just be another outdated and unreliable source of information. That's not what we want. We want it to be current and to have as much information as you possibly can to share. Uh, so James talked a little bit about uh, the, the goals earlier. We wanted to uh, find ways to uh, quantify how many people are watching each page within our wiki and then to be able to uh, rate those, those people to make sure that we have enough people watching the pages um, so that we can trust that that content is being reviewed properly. <clears throat> so then um, turning that around, uh, we provided the watch analytics, um, the, the pending reviews page, and we tried to make it more clear. What do we want you to do? Well, we want you to go check out the pages that have changed since, since you last visited the wiki and go, you know, make sure that you agree with those changes. So we're, we're trying to encourage our users to do their reviews and also to watch more pages. Um, you know, it started off where the three of us were watching pretty much all 10,000 pages, and that's just not good enough because the three of us don't have all the knowledge of our group. There are a lot of other people that are way smarter on different aspects of the suit, different aspects of the space station, and it'd be much better if we could get each of those people to watch those pages. <coughs> So as we talked about this a little bit more, we realized, well, let's not point fingers at people and say, well, you know, you're not doing your job, you're not watching pages. Um, let's instead look at the product. Let's focus on the pages within our wiki. Can we instead focus on quantifying how many people are watching each individual page and 
how often and how well those pages are being reviewed. And that's kind of the back um, theory or the, the idea behind those page scores is let's instead put the focus on, on each individual page. And the idea then is, you know, if someone really cares about a certain page, they're really proud of, of that knowledge of that hardware, and they see that score go down because someone modified it, hopefully they're going to go to that page and review it and say, okay, I agree with that, or no, that's, that's not quite right, let me, let me fix that. Uh, so, as I was saying um, earlier, we're changing our focus from adding a whole bunch of content because now we've, we've populated quite a bit in our wiki and we're going back through and trying to make sure that everything in there is staying current and being reviewed properly. And you know, this is something that people have even criticized Wikipedia of. Um, so it's, it's not only a problem for wikis of small scale. It can happen to, to any uh, knowledge repository. So let's talk a little bit about what do we want our, our users to do. We need to be a little bit more specific about what we'd like them to do. We can't just say, go use the wiki, go review your pages, please. So we want them to watch more pages. We want them to edit often. We want them to promptly go do their reviews. As James said, if they wait three weeks before they go review a page, that leaves uh, a gap where we're exposed and we might have incorrect information out there. So we want people to be... Uh, quick about going in and, and reviewing things. And we want to, them to stay on top of their reviews, don't let it get ahead of them. Well, so if we're going to ask this of all of the people in our group, we need to first identify, well, who are the people within our organization? So in the EVA group, um, we've got, well, in, the, in our wiki, actually, we've got almost a thousand viewers. Clearly, that's a lot more people um, than are just in our small organization. Uh, roughly 100 contributors, um, 47 of those, as James said earlier, are active, what we call active. <coughs> and over the course of um, three and a half years of implementing and, and populating this wiki, we've had <laughs> quite a range of response. Uh, we had some people that right away saw its value and they were very excited to contribute. Um, even today, we've still got some people that just don't like it, they don't really see the value in it, they say, you know, I'm busy, I don't have time for this. So, you know, it's not an easy thing to get everybody on board. So how are we going to get everybody on board? We've got to figure out what motivates them, right? As I said earlier, you know, we could pay them a dollar a day, or maybe we give them a, a sandwich or whatever, but after a while, that's not going to work. They're just going to get tired of that, that extrinsic motivation. So instead, we need to make it something that is based on intrinsic motivation, something that they feel compelled to participate in, just on its own merit. So there are three um, characteristics of intrinsic motivation. Uh, one of those is competence. So it needs to be a little bit challenging. And what challenges James might be a lot different than what challenges me. Uh, some people are very technical. They want to look at... Um, you know, some really um, detailed um, code back behind the wiki. Uh, some people might be interested in just plain sharing some basic information about some hardware. Uh, some people might want to expose gaps in the hardware. <coughs> but regardless, it needs to be something that's a little bit challenging. You don't want it to be too easy. Uh, autonomy. This is where you've got to allow people to do what they want to do. You can't force people and say, you know what, you're going to go to this page and you're going to type these three paragraphs. It might work, but you're probably not going to get as good of a product as if you just kind of, you know, let people loose and say, you know what, let's go out there and, and share some information. And they're going to find their way into the right roles. They're going to, they're going to figure out what works for them. And over the course of the whole, throughout the whole organization, you're going to find that you get the right people doing the right jobs. Uh, lastly, relatedness. It really helps if people can find something to, um, to tie their activity to, uh, whether it's sharing the contributions that they make with other people, um, whether it's just, uh, well, Basically, just finding a way to make it more than just a job. 
So another take on this, another way to think about it is in your organization, you're going to have a lot of different types of people and they're not all the same. And this is something that we really didn't think about until, you know, this past year is what excites us, you know, doing these really cool queries and, and, and linking data together using semantic media wiki, you know, that really excites us. We think that's so cool. But then there's a lot of users that look at that and they, they either think, you know, what is that that's strange or maybe it's um, too challenging for them. And so it's important to realize that there's a lot of different personalities. Some people, as James was saying with his uh, discussion that he overheard, some people are competitive. They want to see who can contribute the most, uh, who can watch the most pages, but not everybody is. So you got to be careful. You don't want to center everything on leaderboards. Uh, some people are self-expressors. This means they act on the content. They want to create new things. They want to customize it and make it their own. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of uh, templating, and we've actually gotten some feedback from people that you know, they find themselves frustrated because they're confined to that template. And so we're talking about, well, are there ways we can ease back on that a little bit and allow them a little bit more freedom so that they're more willing to share the information as long as they have a little bit more freedom in that, in that regard. Uh, explorers, these are people that just want to go around and poke around and see what's out there. And this is great because this helps us prevent from ourselves from getting too much stale information. Maybe they go out and they find, oh, did you know that we have this other page that has information and we just completely forgot about it? So it's really good to reward those types of people for going out there and finding things that, that you didn't know about. Uh, finally, collaboration. This is, you know, sharing. People want to be acknowledged for their work. Um, <coughs> People want to work together and, and work on a team, and it's not that way. It's not dr about direct competition. So, I think it's important to to consider that in a in a wiki way, in a even in a corporate environment where <coughs> you're using the, uh, these these knowledge management tools, it, it's not about which employee or which person did the most which person made the most significant contribution. Really, you're, you just want the product to be the, the, uh, the focus, right? So instead of focusing on which person might have done the best, think of it as a team approach. Whether we all win if we have a good product, um, but if, if we don't get enough people participating, then as a team, we don't have the information that we need. So we've talked a little bit about what we want our users to do, and then we've talked about what might motivate them to do that. But you've got to put this in work. You've got to put some mechanisms in your tool to get people actually doing those, those things. So user activity loops, that's what that means, is how are you going to lead your users into uh, doing what you'd like them to do? So when we, <laughs> when we first started off with the wiki, um, one of the first ways that we tried to help people out was just to walk down the hall and teach them, hey, you know, here's how you do the syntax for a link, or hey, here's this template, and I saw you were trying to use it, but you were using it wrong, you got to do it this way. And <coughs> we kind of found out the hard way that if you're too quick to go down and correct someone and, and give them direct feedback, they might see, see this as the wiki police. They might, they might think, uh, it's a negative correction, even though in our mind, you know, we thought, hey, we're trying to share the information, trying to teach people. But the initial response was, oh, I guess I'm doing it wrong. And these guys came down and corrected me. Um, and they even talk about this on Wikipedia called uh, biting. Um, so just be careful when you're teaching users of new features or trying to um, get people to learn a new, a new aspect of your tool. Um, you, you've got to kind of lead into it. You've got to have an onboarding process. And, and just uh, don't be too quick to correct. Let people figure it out on their own for a little bit. Uh, we, we added some educational tools uh, to start off. So like, um, oops. So the first thing, you know, when people get a, an account uh, with our wiki, we send off an email and it's got a couple screenshots and it shows people how to just get started. It tells them, hey, here's how you go add to a discussion page. Here's how you go do a few basic edits. Um, as with, mo with most things, we have a couple tutorial pages. Uh, turns out that those are somewhat helpful, but they're still confusing to a lot of people. Um, 
So um, lately we've been experimenting with screencasts, little five minute videos um, where people can watch you actually click through and doing um, the, the different uh, functions or activities that you want to teach them. And that way they can play that video and they can try to emulate it on their own computer. Um, likewise, specific to MediaWiki, there's an extension called Guided Tours. And I think that's pretty cool. It actually takes the, uh, it puts a pop-up window and it tells the user, okay, you're going to click over here to edit the page. And you click it and it goes over here and it uh, opens up the edit view. And um, it just kind of walks you through all the steps. So we haven't actually um, implemented any of these yet, uh, but hopefully starting tomorrow we're going to get to work on that. Uh, something else that Scott's going to mention, or he's going to explain in his uh, presentation after lunch, is uh, we created a, a system to to uh, incorporate meeting minutes into the wiki. So we were trying to figure out, you know, what's a what's something that everybody does at our job? Well, they go to meetings and they take notes. Um, and so I won't go into any detail here. I want to leave that for Scott. Um, but it was a way to use a, a nice easy to use uh, form to uh, gather up notes from every meeting and then link them to hardware pages. Uh, subject matter expert, so that's one of those uh, terms that everybody likes to, to implement. And so we found a way to, to uh, add that in pretty easily. Uh, basically every, every hardware page that we have out there, um, you can add in people's names as subject matter experts. And that way it's easy to find uh, the right person to talk to. If there's something not on that hardware page and you need more information, it tells you who to go ask in person. And then uh, James already talked about the pending reviews and the watch suggestions. Uh, so these are just some examples of how we tried to lead our, our, uh, our users uh, toward the right behavior, or what we thought was the right behavior to get the, the right uh, content into our wiki. So where are we lacking? What have we been missing? Well, as I said, uh, we've only recently really started to consider that there's a lot of different personalities out there, and what motivates me is very likely not the same thing that's going to motivate all the other people in our group. Um, so we're trying to figure out what are some different ways that we can um, set up some mechanisms and some tools within our wiki that, that engages those types of users, that excites them, that allows them to share content or maybe compete a little bit. Um, <clears throat> maybe there's uh, something in there that allows them to um, have, have somewhat of a, a journey. You know, maybe they start off as a beginner user and then over time they learn some more skills and they feel this progression of, of advancement in their aptitude of using the wiki. So it's, you know, it's not always the same experience, but over time they can, they can learn how to do more things. So it, we're trying to find ways to um, to actually put in uh, real mechanisms to guide the users through those those types of activities. Um, so James already talked about the score, so I won't talk about that uh, again. Um, there is another extension for MediaWiki that uh, we plan to install soon. It's called Thanks. Um, it's pretty. It's it's a simple concept. Uh, basically, anytime someone goes in and and makes a revision, you can go in and click a button or click a link, and acknowledge them for their contribution. And it, you know, it's kind of like liking something in the uh, Jive engine. And I don't know. It might sound kind of silly, but if you think about it, that user that made that contribution took some time out of their day, out of their work, out of their work time to make that contribution. And when they see other people acknowledging them, they're going to feel compelled to do that more. Um, we've been uh, talking with some of the developers of uh, Wikipedia, asking them if they can expand on this and make it where, in, you know, on a, on a given wiki page, can you hover over the text and, and say, oh, you know what, this paragraph right here, that totally answered my question. Who did that? And click on something, and it'll show, oh, OK, Jordan did that. I want to thank him. and then. Uh, click on that and it'll send a notification. So uh, hopefully that's something that we can work on developing in the future. That's just one of those ideas that I think would be pretty cool. Uh, the other thing, you know, I think we've talked about this a little bit earlier. You know, Cora was talking about cats and dogs. What business does that have in your, in your workplace? 
but you can't get so focused in on the technical side and, and then make it so boring that nobody wants to use the system. And I think that you know we've sort of swayed that way, and now we're trying to find some ways to get back on in the media and there, uh, make it fun for people, make them want to use the tool. It doesn't always have to be totally serious work business. Um, so the uh, I want to acknowledge that the um, the the different sections, the different approaches I've been talking about, actually came from a course on gamification and. Um, Basically, gamification is just a term that means take the elements from games that make you want to return and play those games again, take some of those elements, some of those mechanisms, and employ them in a work environment, uh, well, for any environment where people might not otherwise be in inclined to do something. So, you know, if you're having trouble getting people to participate in sharing their knowledge in whatever tool it is you're using, well, what is it that makes uh, whatever game it is that you're hooked on on your phone, what is it that makes you want to play that every day, right? Take a take, uh, key from that game, what, whatever it is that draws you in, and try to turn it around and use that in your uh, knowledge management tool. And I just want to share, uh, we are uh, posting all of our extensions on enterprisemediawiki.org. Uh, we're happy to share any of our extensions, um, they're all open source, and of course they're still always in development, and we'll, we're happy to take your feedback if uh, something's not working or if you have an idea on how to make it better. So I think we have a few minutes uh, for questions. Thanks, guys. I'd just be curious to hear about how you're making the connections for your watch uh, watch list, how you're determining which are like pages and related pages to each other. Um, so you're, you're wondering how it's determining the, the connection between them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically you've got your list of pages that you're watching and um, then those pages all link to other pages on the wiki. Um, so basically then um, you take every page that it is linked, that any given page is linked to, and you increment a score for that page. And so as you go through all of the pages in your watch list, um, you know, we'll, one page might have been linked to by every single page in your watch list. That one's probably going to be suggested to you. Um, if it's linked from 80% of the pages in your watch list, still probably going to be suggested to you, that kind of thing. Um, so that's the current method. Um, we've talked with, with David um, as about you know, doing some categorization and, and looking at the actual text. And so that's something we hope to do in the future um, to be able to pull in things like, you know, because that's, that's one way that things like lessons learned can continue to not really be learned, um, is that, you know, if somebody goes and puts this lesson learned in there and nothing ends up linking to it, you know, that's, that's no good. So we want to be able to get into a little bit of that content as well. In your uh, watch analytics, have you thought about or, or have some mechanism in it for looking at pages that haven't been touched in some length of time. So for the originator of a page or maybe somebody who's done 10 edits on it, uh, some pleasing way to a monthly digest to say, hey, here are pages you've been involved in and they haven't, they haven't changed in, in a year uh, to prompt to think about if there's some appropriate updates for them. Um, yeah, we've, we've thought about it. It's, um, it's something that's absolutely on our uh, list of things to do. So we kind of want to be able to score pages for volatility and um, I'm kind of forgetting all the list of the things, but um, importance, which you can determine based on just saying we've declared this important, or you could say you know this is getting repeated views from hundreds of people, so it's probably important, um, or at least people care about it. Um, so we're kind of looking at those and then looking at that in, in that in relation to whether it's stale, what we call stale. Um, and maybe kind of pushing those to the tops of people's, you know, hey, you should take a look at this um, list. We don't have a formal way we're doing it yet, but it's certainly on, on the plan. I used to be a shuttle flight controller, and you know, way back when, when there was a problem in flight, you, you go talk to an old guy, and he would say, well, on flight so-and-so, we had a similar issue, and here's what we did. Have you thought about reaching out to retirees 
and getting some of that knowledge and putting it into your wiki? Um, I hadn't. That's a really great idea. Um, so we can um, see if we can. I've got my manager over there, and she says she thinks she can help. So I'm going to punt that one to her. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a technical question. On your watch uh, analytics, are you querying the MediaWiki database um, for each time the page loads? And how, what's the impact on, um, I guess, on your CPU utilization? Does it slow down your servers and stuff? So, At present, at our scale, it's not an issue. Um, you know, if, if we scale up to, you know, we're hoping to expand a little bit. We've got other groups that, that are using separate instances of MediaWiki. So the robotics, several of the robotics team are, are right here in front of you and um, our trajectory group um, and biomedical engineering group. There's several other groups that want to do it. If we scale further than that, it could potentially be an issue, um, but right now it's not and we'll try to roll with that when we get there um, by indexing it or something like that. Um, one of the issues that we run into with Wiki is uh, stale content that we need to archive off and, you know, it's not relevant anymore. So do you guys run into that, um, you know, if the, the identifying content that needs to be archived and removed? Um, so how we deal with that right now is, um, so every page on our Wiki has a discussion page associated with it. and. Basically, the way it's handled right now, I don't think we have an, an official kind of standard for it, is somebody will just comment on the discussion page and say, you know, I don't think that this is relevant anymore. Um, I think this page should be deleted. Generally, people don't just go make unilateral decisions to delete stuff. Um, and nothing's ever actually gone anyway. It's all just kind of removed from, from uh, normal viewing. Um, so it'll happen like that, or somebody will put a marker on the page, categorize it as marked for deletion, and suggest, you know, delete by next month or something like that, giving people an, an opportunity to say, I don't think this should be deleted, it's still relevant, we should roll it into this page or, or whatever. Anyone else? Thank you very much.